2024 General Smallwood, we are going to be targeting our Olympic this year. This is on April 27th, 2024. Uh, this is our landing page here. We are going to be diving into some course details here. Make sure you hit up the course maps. We're going to pop in there in a second. But as you scroll down here, you're going to have loads of helpful information like race policies, directions, athlete guide, participant list, and facts. We are doing the athlete guide here first. Here's our athlete guide rolling down here. Schedule of events is Friday, 5 to 7. We have packet pickup at the race site. And also there's going to be a pre-race meeting at 6 p.m. at the race site. Might be Facebook Live, might be not, uh, but that remains to be seen. Follow them on Facebook for more information as it gets closer uh, for day before information. Race day. Arrival. Please arrive to the race site no later than 6 a.m. Transition opens 6.30. 6.30 to 7 is packet pickup, body mark, and chip pickup. Transition closes 7.45. Race start for our Olympic is 8 a.m. And the bike course closes and the roads open at 11 a.m. Olympic awards happen at 11.45 a.m. Um, and at noon, the run course closes. All right, so here is our parking and race site layout over here. Parking number one over here, overflow parking is going to be located over here. Transition is sandwiched in between the two. Our finish line is right here. Packet pickup with awards and food is also going to be located under the gazebos right over here. So our swim start is going to happen over here. Swim finish is looping around over here where you will run up a hill right around the finish line. This is a, a decently long T1, not the longest, but a, a good size one. So be prepared to move from the water to your transition. Not a huge deal. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty manageable out there. You go into transition, you go out on the bike this way, and then you bring the bike back in. Uh, actually, it looks like it's this way. Curl around for the bike finish, and then the run out is over here, and you will come around the bottom over here for the finish right through there. All right. That is a overview of the site layout. You can see here, this is a good depiction of the swim over here. We have a wave start right here, and they are swimming around the buoys in a counterclockwise fashion, and they are going to be finishing right at the Wiggly Man right there. Pretty cool stuff. Packet pickup, bring your photo ID questions. No ID equals no race. Um, <clears throat> Bib numbers will be assigned and timing chips distributed at packet pickup. Please do not lose either. Adults must pick up their own. And minors, uh, you must have a guardian pick up yours. You can change your category during the or before the race. Just have to let them know what you are doing. All right? This is a good line of people getting ready before the swim. There's usually um, someone talking around here somewhere with race info, and the race start happens over there. Course cutoff times on page six located. Uh, swim's going to be an hour, bike is three, and the run finish is a four hour cutoff time. Transition, first come, first serve for these bike racks, three per rack uh, each way. So that means a six totals bikes for a specific 10 foot section of bike rack. Page seven, race numbers, run, bib right here, bike sticker on the helmet, on the bike, left timing chip on the ankle there. Body marking, aid stations, no aid stations on the bike. No aid stations on the bike and aid stations approximately every one, one and a half miles on the run, which will have water and Gatorade, which are awesome, awesome to see. So you should be able to manage things a lot easier here. One of our hotter races earlier on in the season, so be prepared for heat uh, just in case. There's also going to be post-race food awards. You can scan it here, or there's going to be a scrolling automatic thing as it keeps going uh, throughout the day there, and it will get more and more populated depending on who finishes where. It's pretty cool. They set it up in a tent. <clears throat> Page 10 has USAT rules and policies mixed in here. Make sure you're visiting these every once in a while. Uh, probably a good thing to do every before the start of every season. Uh, and updated rules for 23. You can see this is last year. No headphones during the bike or run. 10-meter draft zone. USAT penalties, of course, will be given on course. Blue or a yellow card uh, requiring a stop at the penalty tent located at the run out. So that's right at the transition area. Good to know. You don't have to ask about that. It tells you right there. All right, wetsuit rules, 78 and below. Wetsuits are allowed 78.1 to 83.9. You may wear a wetsuit, but you will not be eligible for awards. 84 and above, no wetsuits allowed. This is the... Um this is the a picture of the of the swim here. If I could say words, that'd be great. Here we have the start yellow buoy and the yellow turn buoy, yellow turn buoy, and another one over here. You have to stay on the outside of those. And the other ones, if they are any, orange, 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 are going to be sighting buoys. But make sure you double check with that before the race starts. Page 14 has some swim course rules. The Olympic has a two-loop swim course, um, which is something to be aware of. The sprint is only a single swim loop. 
bike course is posted on the website <clears throat> and the Olympic bike course. Uh, and this and the sprint actually split at a certain point. The Olympics keeps going straight, and the sprints will have to make a turn. And we'll talk about that in a second here. And the run the run is mapped out. It is a Olympic two loop 5K run course. Um, which is very, very cool to see. So let's dive into some nitty-gritty details here. So before we go too far, here's that turn that I was talking about right here. Actually, Olympics have to make a right-hand turn, and these sprint individuals go straight ahead. Um, but let's back up to our swim here. Our swim, uh, again, Olympic has the two-loop course, so it's going to be a little bit tight this year. Um, if you have done this course probably like eight or nine years ago, you will know that that race course was only a single loop, but now we have two loops out here. Uh, swim start is going to be happening over here. And this whole first section right through here is very, very contested. Every single year, very, very big battles in there. Uh, I know it's not going to be super duper tight this year, uh, but, you know, you just want to keep... Uh, an eye out for other people there. So I would enter the water with like-minded individuals, people who are going to be tra targeting the same area or time that you are. Uh, and then when you get to this turn, again, it's still going to be busy, and it's not going to be um, kind of emptier, more comfortable to swim until you get to this point on the course here. And once you do, you have to make another left-hand turn, and by the time you're on your second loop, everyone's pretty spread out and has kind of assimilated into their own factions there. So... Once you are on the second loop, it's largely dictated by your pace. If you see that there's a group of four or five people up ahead of you, it might be worth bridging up. But if there's only one or two people ahead, you're going to have to weigh the pros and cons in the moment. Uh, the currents don't really affect this way too much. Uh, but if it does, uh, it's going to be influenced by the tide going this way or this way, uh, mostly. All right, so scrolling down here, this is our bike Let's go too far. This is our bike course, uh, and see inside. This is our <clears throat> uh, this is our bike course right here. We do have, and I'm, this is the, the zoomed in section right through here. We do have a right hand turn to make down there, and then we uh, climb a hill, and before we make another right hand turn onto the main road, when we come back in, we're going to be zigzagging our way back to the transition area, probably the exact same way that you drove into the transition area, and that's just a heads up here. Uh, another couple of heads up, this area right through here and this area right through here, notoriously difficult, and also right through here. Uh, this is going to be the areas where you are just super tired, you might be exposed to more elements out there, and it just might not be super fun all the time. This is our bike course out there. I'm going to get rid of speed for us so we can see exactly what we're doing and targeting here. Um, getting rid of our speed, you can see that this course has uh, pretty much a steady state aside from a couple of big areas out here. When you are going uphill, you're going to have to be going fast. It is an Olympic, and these hills are not really super big out there. Okay, this area, be very, very careful here. Be very careful there uh, not to overdo it. But if you attack these hills down here on the downhills, you're going to be able to carry your speed a bit better on the uphills for the most part, not in every situation here, but for the most part, like in this area right through here, if you attack on the downhills right through here, you're going to get up about halfway um, <clears throat> before having to do some serious work up there. With that, um, <clears throat> you know, that is pretty much the bike course in a nutshell. A common thing for athletes to do is to overdo it in this section over here and to really pay for it later on in this section over here. So, when you are in this first half, be very smart. If you feel like you could possibly go a little bit harder, that's probably the perfect pace or effort level to do this on. After that point, right, it's going to get harder and harder and harder. Look at that blue elevation line. I'm going to do a red arrow because that's all I have. Um, it's just steadily going up right there. And if you follow our little course cursor right there, that's when we get to the bottom of our course and we zigzag all the way back to this curve right here. This is just a steady incline. And it's not the, the steepest of inclines and it's not, you know, the longest, but it's going to wear on you and it's going to start to feel really, really hard. Undulating uphill as well, so you're going to have kind of a double whammy there. Uh, and that is our bike. We go to our time analysis section and we say, hey, 
What happens if I go a little bit harder? This is our total gain for 5% harder. This athlete was originally targeting 220 watts, or to, excuse me, 217 watts, and we finish with this 5% increase at 228 watts average power. Normalized power, 220, and we go to 230, so about 10 watts harder. We only gain ourselves a net of about, uh, let's call it a minute 10, maybe a minute 20, maybe. So with that, you know, you got to weigh the pros and the cons of what is happening out there on race day. This course has a lot of large bulky gaps. So if I were you, I would target a couple of these, not all of them. You know what I mean? So gradually increase your effort throughout here or target a couple of areas. Um, and that usually comes in one of two ways. That usually comes in this way or in this way. All right, with a little bit of overlap in between. In my mind, the second of the two is probably more beneficial on a course like this. But uh, on the first half, you're going to be right in those hills. You're going to be attacking. You're going to kind of be driving the speed on the downhills. And on the second half, you're going to be carrying your speed. So you kind of have to ride this course two different ways almost. Going back to our uh, our course guides here, we have the the run section out here on race day. And if we go to a more granular approach to this run course, this is our three mile run course right through here. And again, you're going to see some things right off the bat. Flat start. This is potentially troublesome. I like it when there's a hill because it kind of reminds people don't go too hard. But for that first half a mile, you're going to see people booking it out there. Be careful, don't let that happen to you because you're going to have to do a major hill after that. And this is just one loop, guys. This is not uh, this is not the overall course. It's just one loop of our course. I just wanted to zoom in for you to get you a bigger picture here. Afterwards, we have a nice little decline here, and I will get rid of my tool to help show you where that is. That is on the main road. But you do have to climb up a bit before you get to make that turn back into the park over there on that far side. So you are climbing out, and then you are running down, and then you are climbing up again to enter that park. And then once you get to the little bit of the unpaved area back in here, uh, then it slowly drops you down. And that drop down just becomes more and more for a little bit before you get back to this little zigzag section and back to where the campers are back here after this point. You know, it's shaded, it's feeling great, and then you come out the bottom back here, and it's like swampy, marshy, there's a bridge that goes over the water, it's very, very nice, but what happens in here is the air gets trapped, so if it is a humid, hot day, uh, this is going to be where you really, really feel it right here, just because the air isn't moving, and it has nowhere to go, and then once you run out of it, you're going to be running into a different kind of heat, so this is an area where you can open yourself up to some heat stress, um, if you're not careful or not aware of it on race day. So manage those heat protocols. Be actively checking in with yourself and say, hey, am I getting too hot? Do I need to slow down? Is this pace okay? <clears throat> and arriving at the top of this section over here, um, right where you enter the park again on the backside, this unpaved road over here, if you arrive at this section ready to rock and roll or saying, wow, uh, I don't know if I could do that again, you went too hard. If you arrive here saying, yep, I am, it's time to turn the afterburners on. It's time to start running. That's perfect, okay? Use this first half a mile to establish yourself. Just get up this first hill. Again, kind of recover, start running your pace down here. And then once you get up to this point in here, we have a four and a half incline. Uh, so you're not going to be able to run super, super well right there. But just get up it. And then this is the point at which you really start running. Now, if you are not paying attention to your running form at this time, if you're not watching your running mechanics and where you're landing and all of that good stuff, you're going to pay for it later on when you come back to this hill again and have to run up it again. Uh, and this is going to look and feel like a giant mountain, but it's not. Okay, just get up it, walk, run up it, don't uh, don't overthink it, and it will be fine. All right, um, this is the this is the General Smallwood 2024 Olympic preview over here. Good luck, everybody, and I wish that you have a great race. Let me know how it goes, everyone. Bye.